Millions of years ago, Lucifer tried to lead a rebellion against God and was punished by being thrown out of heaven. He fell right into hell, and Archangel Michael chained him to a large rock, leaving his own sword as the seal. Before Michael leaves, Lucifer swears he'll come back someday as an equal to God. As years pass, Lucifer gathers demons to help him plan his revenge, and his worshippers build a villa around the hole through which he fell while they wait for his return. The year is now 2022, and art historian Laura is studying in Italy. She wants to write a thesis on how the great Italian artists didn't actually believe in the angels and demons they represented in their art, but her professor doesn't approve of the idea because it insults Italy's history. To make matters worse, he offers to discuss the thesis in private at his apartment, forcing Laura to run away from the creep. Moments later, Laura meets with Father Marconi, who gives her a special pass that will give her access to all the exhibitions in his cathedral, including the new display of the Shroud of Turin. This shroud contains Jesus's blood from his crucifixion. The priest gives Laura a full tour of the place and after seeing the shroud, Marconi shows her their latest arrival, a beautiful statue of Michael defeating Lucifer. The duo discusses the concept of evil for a while, then Marconi leaves Laura so she can work on sketching the statue for her thesis. While she draws, Laura thinks she can hear someone saying her name, but there's nobody around and she blames it on her imagination. A few hours later, the exhibition is about to close. A raven is flying around the building and lands by the entrance as it transforms into Liz to join the last group of visitors. Instead of following the guide though, she takes an off-limits door, which is noticed by a guard on the security cameras. Liz takes the corridor with the statues and watches Laura draw from a distance, only stopping when she suddenly notices Lucifer's head on the statue moving. Laura begins getting worried again and checks her surroundings, only to be startled by a raven at the window. While Laura is distracted by the bird, Liz steals Michael's sword from the statue and leaves. At that moment a guard finds Laura thinking she's the hooded person that got separated from the group, but Laura proves she's got access to this area. The guard leaves thinking it was a misunderstanding after reminding Laura they're closing. Laura gathers her things and notices Michael's hand, but she can't tell the difference. Next she approaches the front door, but since it's already locked, she goes looking for a different exit. When she gets back to the corridor, she's shocked to see Liz killing the guard with the sword and taking his head. Terrified, Laura runs away and hides in a confessional booth, which allows her to see Liz turning off the alarms with the guard's eyes and breaking the glass that protects the shroud with the sword to steal the relic. Marconi hears the noise and comes to stop her, but Liz just stabs him. Then Liz's henchmen arrive to help protect the shroud, but on their way out, Liz sees Laura in the booth and orders her men to take her. After the group leaves the room, Marconi uses his last breath to pray and asks Michael to use his body in order to stop Lucifer. Michael immediately descends from heaven and takes over the priest's body to run after Liz's group, who are leaving in their car. His angel powers allow him to run quite fast, but the human flesh can't withstand such power and Michael has to stop to avoid destroying the body. Meanwhile a group of rich people watches how a prodigy child plays the violin with admirable skill. After the performance, Dr. Laurent explains this kid is a clone of Antonio Vivaldi, which is one more famous name in a long list of clones that his company has been making by taking DNA from their graves. The babies are then auctioned to rich parents, and today's offer is a Michelangelo clone. During the auction, Liz shows up to let Laurent know they have the shroud. Moments later, the group makes it to Lucifer Villa. Laurent is excited to see the shroud because now he can finally clone Jesus, while Laura is chained inside a glass cell with Brenda and two other women. One of them won't stop crying and yelling, but Laura uses some soft words to help her calm down. Laura also thinks they should work together, but before they can plan anything, a bunch of nurses enters the cell to take her vitals. In the meantime, Michael returns to the cathedral and finds other priests reviewing the security tapes. The men are shocked to see Marconi alive, but Michael doesn't give an explanation and asks about the protectors of the shroud. The priests explained Cardinal Vincini had been in charge of the protection, but he became unstable and started to talk about demonic beasts and secret cults, which everyone blamed on dementia. Michael can't believe priests don't believe in what the Bible itself says and demands to know where Vincini is, learning he's now a hermit living alone in an asylum. Then Michael takes the security footage, asks about Laura by showing them her pass, and makes the priests promise they won't tell anyone that they saw him. Afterward Michael borrows a jacket and leaves in Marconi's car, taking some medicine he finds in the glove box to deal with the pain caused by his powers. All the while, a raven follows him without him noticing. While the villa scientists work hard on getting Jesus' DNA from the shroud, Michael makes it to the asylum and meets Vincini, who is armed and afraid. However as soon as Vincini touches Michael, he can tell he isn't just a priest and immediately believes him when he says he's an angel. Vincini knows about Liz and shows Michael the villa they built around the hole to hell while explaining this asylum was built as a lookout. The scriptures talk about Lucifer returning someday, and for that he needs two ancient beasts who are of both worlds, one is the woman, obviously referring to Liz, and the other is the beast of the ground. For years, Lucifer's followers brought him kids for him to possess, but those human bodies weren't strong enough to contain him. That's why they stole the shroud, they're planning to clone Jesus because he's the only one with a body strong enough for Lucifer to take over. 
Michael is disgusted by what he hears and promises to stop them, so Vincini drives Michael to the foot of the Villa Mountain. Michael's presence in the area makes his sword react, and now Lucifer can pull at the chain to finally free himself from the seal. In the villa, the women are trying to find a way to break their chains while chatting about their personal lives, which reveals Laura has lost her husband and her child. Laurent runs some tests and discovers Laura is 100% compatible, so Liz orders him to hurry up the process. Next the nurses return to the cell to take the girls, but the women use their chains to try to defend themselves. Unfortunately more nurses arrive and quickly overpower them to then take Brenda and Laura to the surgery room. There, the doctors implant eggs fertilized with Jesus' DNA in the girls' uteri and Liz shows up to introduce herself as an angel of the Lord. She tells Laura that she knows she's the one because she saw her sketches of Lucifer back in the cathedral and they were very inspiring. Meanwhile Vincini leaves Michael at the entrance of a secret cave that will take him to the villa. Before leaving, Vincini notices the raven that has been following them and shoots it before giving his weapon to Michael, who immediately begins making his way into the cave. Moments later, Laura and Brenda are dressed as brides and brought to a gathering of the Lucifer worshippers, where they're chained to a pillar. Then the beast of the ground comes to pick up the girls and puts them inside a huge bird cage that is lowered inside the well that protects the hole to hell. Suddenly a bunch of demons appear around the cage and hold the women down while Lucifer transforms his body into only its essence so he can enter Brenda through her mouth. For a few seconds Brenda struggles against the devil but in the end she can't stand it and dies. Then Lucifer leaves her body and enters Laura's instead, who manages to survive the possession without trouble. Afterward Laura walks outside in a daze and Liz presents her as the chosen one before taking her to a new glass cell with a bed and a vital sign monitor. When Laura asks what's inside her, Liz says it's a better Jesus. Back to Michael, he finally finds a door in the cave tunnel and shoots it open to enter the villa. The guards immediately notice him, and when Michael fails to use his weapon, he gets shot in the shoulder. He responds by knocking out the guards with a few hits, then he steals a uniform and a pass to go unnoticed. Michael gains access to the lab and retrieves the shroud before looking at the security cameras to get Laura's location. At that moment Laurent enters the lab, but Michael immediately pushes him against the table and demands answers. Laurent's only response is that he works for a new beginning. Michael decides to open the gas canisters and light a flare to blow up the whole lab, putting fire between him and the incoming guards. The fire alarm begins ringing in the whole building and Laura asks the nurse to let her go, but the guy won't let her leave the cell. Suddenly Michael arrives and after he knocks out the nurse, Laura hugs him thinking Marconi is alive after all. However Michael gets distracted because Lucifer begins to speak to him telepathically, teasing him about his freedom. Michael doesn't understand how his seal was broken and gets furious, making think Laura that he's part of the enemy. Scared, Laura runs away, but Michael quickly goes after her and drags her into a room before she can be found by the guards. Laura responds by stealing his gun and pointing it at him, but Michael convinces her he's on her side while he takes care of the bullet wound. Then Laura explains what they did to her, so Michael decides to drag her away with him to protect her. Liz sees them leave and sends her henchmen after them, but she kills one of the guards when he almost shoots Laura because she must come to no harm. Michael and Laura try to escape through the cave tunnel, but the baby is growing too fast and Laura begins to feel unwell. Their slowness gives time for the beast to catch up to them and it begins fighting Michael, who at first offers good combat but soon his human body begins failing again and the beast defeats him. Liz arrives with the henchmen and recaptures Laura, who threatens with hurting the baby if they hurt the priest. However Liz reminds her the priest is already dead and she just needs to kill the angel too. While Laura is taken back to the cell and tied to the bed, Michael is chained in the room with the well. He uses his powers to destroy the chains and he frees himself, but this leaves him extremely weak. After dragging his body through the ground, he reaches the well and opens it to jump into it right before the beast can catch him. As soon as he lands in hell, Michael is attacked by a demon that he quickly pushes away. He checks the rock and is shocked to see his sword isn't there. More demons arrive and use Lucifer's sword to imprison Michael the same way he had done to Lucifer years ago. Meanwhile the baby continues to grow in Laura at a supernatural speed. Liz tells Laura that this baby will replace the one she lost, but she refuses to call them the same. During an ultrasound scan, Laura watches the baby on the screen and is shocked to suddenly see him crawl out to roar at her, but at that moment she wakes up and understands it was only a dream. She finds Liz sitting next to her, who wants to know if Lucifer talks to her. Since Laura doesn't answer, Liz begins telling the story of how Lucifer fought the tyrant they know as God, and when Laura says she doesn't care, Liz slaps her. Liz promises she'll free Laura after she gives birth, but for now, she demands respect. Moments later, a group of kids finds Michael on the rock. It turns out these are the failed sacrifices who have been working together to survive in hell. Michael promises he can take them home if they manage to find a sword, but the kids aren't sure if they can trust angels since Lucifer had been one too. Unfortunately the demons interrupt the chat and the kids run away, but a few of them get captured and Michael can only watch with frustration. Back in the cell, Lucifer's essence temporarily leaves Laura's uterus and enters her mind through her ear to make her an offer she can't refuse. If Laura accepts him into her life, Lucifer will help kill the guy that murdered her family and also Liz, who Laura hates. Accepting the deal, 
Laura lies down on the bed and accepts Lucifer to take over the baby as she dreams of holding the child and bonding with him. Liz watches all this and begins worrying about Laura becoming too strong. Later while a nurse runs some tests, Laura uses her new powers to put out the light and kill the nurse. Then she leaves the room and bumps into another nurse, whom she immediately begins beating up and kicking until he dies. Suddenly Laura snaps out of Lucifer's dark hold and is terrified by what she just did, deciding she must kill the baby before it gets worse. This makes Lucifer ask her not to do it while calling her mother. Laura ignores Lucifer's voice and runs into a janitorial closet as guards begin chasing her. After locking the door, Laura grabs a bottle of chlorine and struggles against Lucifer's control to drink it. As Laura pukes and begins wiggling in pain, Liz kicks down the door and yells at Laura for what she did to the baby. When she's about to leave to find a doctor, Laura suddenly uses her powers to close the door and push Liz to the ground to puke on her face. It turns out Lucifer is controlling her body now and this is him punishing Liz for her mistakes. Liz wishes she could have been the one to carry the baby, but Lucifer ignores her pleas to give her new orders. After the birth, nobody can know what happened here, so everyone must die. He's also worried about the fact Laura and the baby are bonding, meaning she must be killed after the birth too. Then Laurent arrives and Lucifer hits him as he demands to be saved from the chlorine. Moments later, Laura's body is put inside a healing pot. Lucifer's essence temporarily leaves her body and takes over a demon in hell to talk to Michael to make fun of his failure, which is seen by the kids from the shadows as proof Michael is a good guy. After Lucifer leaves, Michael finally understands why God is allowing this to happen, and the kids come to his rescue. They aren't strong enough to remove the demon sword from the chains, so they go looking for Michael's own sword. They find it among some rubble, but before they can give it to Michael, a bunch of demons arrive and offer freedom to the kids too. For a moment the kids hesitate, but then they remember what they heard and they give the sword to Michael, who momentarily gains his old form and kills the demons. After promising the kids he'll come back for them soon, Michael returns to Earth in Marconi's body and retrieves the shroud before going back to the main building. He knocks down a guard and steals a weapon before going to check on Laura, only for Lucifer's voice to answer her. Desperate to help, Michael begins pushing the pod to take it into another room, which is seen by a nurse. After locking the door, Michael opens the pod and tries to explain the baby isn't what Laura thinks, but Lucifer pushes him away with a mighty roar. Then Lucifer guides Laura's body to stand above Michael and announces her water has broken before releasing the liquid on the angel, burning his body. Michael tries to run away, but Lucifer grabs him and holds him on Laura's lap as he asks to be worshipped. When Michael refuses, Lucifer stabs his neck with Laura's fingers, but Michael won't give up and shares the conclusion he reached. God is allowing this because if Lucifer enters Jesus' holy body, Jesus will keep him under his control and sealed forever. Lucifer is furious to hear this and begins throwing a tantrum, knocking out Michael in the process. When Liz comes with the guards, Lucifer asks her to kill the baby, but Liz assumes it's Laura talking again and makes the guards take her to the altar. On top of the well to hell, Laura gives birth to the baby and Liz immediately takes him away. Laura is left alone on the well and the beast opens the lid to make her fall before joining the others outside. Liz presents their new savior to Lucifer's followers and announces he'll be baptized with blood instead of water, then the beast proceeds to kill every follower, doctor, and guard. Laurent is shocked but also glad to be spared, however after he gets to kiss the baby's head, the beast kills him as well. Meanwhile Michael wakes up and breaks the window with his weapon to escape the room. He enters the well room and finds Laura hanging on the edge, so he helps her up before they go after their enemy together. Liz is about to leave with the baby in a car, but Laura jumps on her and hits her before reaching for the child. Liz asks for no harm for Lucifer, and Michael explains that the baby isn't Lucifer. The devil didn't choose Laura, God did, and she gave birth to what will become Lucifer's eternal prison. Laura gets in the car and leaves to find Vincenny while Michael stays to fight because the gates to hell are now open, meaning the demons will try to escape. Michael rushes to the well and closes it, only to be found by the beast, who throws him away to start opening the well again. Before the beast can do so, Michael discovers the explosives Liz left to get rid of the evidence and activates them now, causing an explosion that destroys the facility and covers the hole under all the debris. Sometime later, Vincenny takes Laura and the baby to the cathedral and they return the shroud while Michael returns to hell to free all the kids as promised. Years pass, and Laura lives with Vincenny in the asylum to protect the child, who has grown well and healthy. One day, Liz sneaks into the forest to watch the family and tries to call for Lucifer, but when the devil tries to escape, the child simply absorbs him back into his body to keep him sealed.